Welcome to Respect the Dead, the podcast where we don't. Teddy, it's no surprise that everyone celebrated your demise. And now, worms are eating your eyes. So don't you worry, rotting head, as you sleep in your sodden bed. It's time to respect the dead. Welcome to Respect the Dead. I'm Kellen Conrad. I'm Hoots. And I'm Ailey Mandy. And today it's my turn to go. And we are talking... Oh, neither of you know who I'm doing, right? No. No, no idea. Oh, okay. I love this. Okay, so we are talking about a crusty crazen Virgo. Her name was Anya's Ganja Boyju. She was born 76 years and one day before I was... So like Ooh, okay. 76 BCC, if you will, <laughs> I will. She was born to a grocer, but destined to be the biggest, baddest, girl bossiest, white saviorist in human history. <laughs> Lots of people know her as a saint, a miracle worker, <gasps> a proof of the goodness of humanity. Mm. Her name would become synonymous with virtue, generosity, and godliness. Oh, shit. I first heard about her when I was a little fag. Can I say that on here? Yeah, it's fine. You can. Trigger warning, I said fag. <laughs> In the past. <laughs> That's not really that trigger warning, sir, but I like it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> really funny. Okay, so when I was a kid, my mother would always be like, Listen, mommy does her best, but she's no Mother Teresa. Yeah! Which is good, because if she was like Mother Teresa, she probably would have given me HIV and then told me I deserved it. <laughs> yes! Yes! I don't know if you do know about that little. We'll get to that. I'm so excited. And I will just say, Mother Teresa was a beastler. She was the biggest Beesler to ever Beesler. Wow. So I am so excited for this episode because Kaylin has been teasing Mother Teresa <laughs> for us for like weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that was one of the first yeah. people I talked about when we decided to do this. I was like, I want to dig up her fetid corpse and drag <laughs> it through the fucking streets of Calcutta. <laughs> you did. You did. Um <laughs> And I feel like she's also just one of those ones that I keep coming across when I've like been like, who are people that are dead that suck? Like she's always popping up on lists. So I'm excited to actually, right but now. I haven't, <laughs> I'm on some FBI list or something, um, <laughs> but you know, but I've been purposely trying to not read that much about her. Cause I kind of was like, Oh, I think Kaylin's going to do her at some oh, point. Absolutely. So, I'm not gonna I had so many look. dibs. Um, so I'm so excited. I'm also excited to hear about like how her P she has like the best PR in the world because she is remembered as being the, the sweetest angel that has ever lived she, on she God's green earth. She is yeah. only remembered that way in the West. <gasps> okay. I'm ready. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Let's do it. Okay. So by the age of 12, she was claiming a, and can we just um, go back to the fact that her little name, her middle name is pronounced Ganja. I'm yes. like absolutely <laughs> obsessed. At first I was like, this is going like, to be my drag queen name. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> that's what I thought. I'm like, I'm 100% going to be Anya Ganja. Anya like, Ganja. This is so good. <laughs> Anya Ganja, yeah. Okay. So by 12, she was claiming a divine connection to God. And by 18, she had joined up with a bunch of Irish nuns called the Sisters of Loretto. And they started doing missionary work in India. Mm. The name Teresa comes from Saint, I think this is French. So like Saint Therese of Lisieux, who is the patron saint of missionaries. Okay. So like, this is probably the most racist saint possible. Colonist saint. Mm. Colonist. <laughs> Between 1931 and 48, she taught at a Catholic high school and then decided to open her own school and work with the poor. Um, and work with sort of means use for like photo opportunities, publicity, and to further develop her own sense of morality. And like, like she once said that poor people were put on earth to suffer so that people who were close to God could show God's love and develop their own character. So like Instagram missionaries. Oh, Yes, 100%. <laughs> like, literally like blonde women who pose She's, with African children. Yeah. Yes. Oh, no, 100%, but like so much worse. Okay. Um, <laughs> wow. At least they're only in so, it for the clout, right? 
<laughs> yeah, they're not like burning kids with like hot knives or Jesus anything like Christ. that. Jesus yeah. Christ! Spoiler. Yeah. No. So, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Trigger warning: burning with hot knives. <laughs> burning children um, with hot knives. <laughs> <laughs> Specifically. <laughs> Two years later, uh, she created the Missionaries of Charity, which is like. It's like very focused on the family. It's like, oh, no, no, don't worry. We're doing good stuff. We're the missionaries of charity. Um, (laughs) So they said that their mission statement was to care for the sick and the dying. And by 1965, she had an official international religious family. So it's sort of like drag moms with like young drag queens. It's like, she's like the mom. She's like the house mom. And she runs this like gaggle, this cult of nuns. And they have to like follow her direction Mm -hmm. because she's like godly enough. Oh my God. Nun ballroom would be such a funny idea for a movie. Yes. (laughs) I would watch it. Oh my God. I mean, it was called Sister Act and Sister Act 2 back in the habit. Thank you very much. I love Sister Act 2. Both of those movies are amazing. They're so good. I showed them to my best friend for the first time because they had never seen them and they lost their fucking mind. (laughs) (laughs) Like, how have I never seen this? It's Uh. like Hocus Pocus, but with Catholics. (laughs) (laughs) Hocus Pocus with Catholics. (laughs) Uh, Mother Teresa's order soon spread globally, creating centers to serve those in need at the time, which is like a lot of... I help the blind and the elderly, people that at the time didn't have any way to help themselves. And her little cult started with only 12 followers, but eventually she would have like 5,600 members and hundreds of thousands of volunteers. Wow. And these people are working at orphanages, schools, homeless shelters, health clinics, homes for the sick and dying. And like um, she would house inmates that were sick. So she didn't have like a prison, but she didn't not have a prison. (laughs) Um, She also built a leper colony in India. And a lot of people claimed that it wasn't so much so that they could live their lives like as comfortably as possible. So much as it was, she didn't want leprosy. So she didn't want to treat them. So she had a place to send them away when they came to her hospitals or whatever. Yeah, Yeah. I was just about to say, it sounds like a quarantine segregation kind of move. Like, oh, you have leprosy. Why don't you just go into that Mm. little corner over there? So a leper colony. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Like, um, die or don't die, but don't die here. Mm. Um, So she herself took a vow, like, before her daddy to live, like, her her, her god daddy. (laughs) (laughs) I promise you, daddy. (laughs) I promise you, daddy, I'm going to live amongst the poor. I'm going to be so so fucking good. I'm going to be so good for you, daddy. (laughs) 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 I'm going to help these filthy fucking lepers for you, daddy. (laughs) Um, Stop it. You're turning me into a Christian right now. (laughs) (laughs) Hoots is all like like flustered over there. Like, oh my goodness. I'm just (laughs) horny for my Lord Father. Is this what Christianity is? (laughs) I feel his deep throbbing love within my (laughs) Um, Okay. So in her own words, she said that with her unlimited love, she would make it her life's work to protect the hungry, the naked, the homeless, the word I can't say for disabled people, the blind, the lepers, and all those people who feel unwanted, unloved, uncared for throughout society, people that have become a burden to the society and are shunned by everyone. I like how she included the naked. Very nice of her to include nudists in there. <laughs> <laughs> they are shunned by society. I mean, that statement, uh, divorced from everything else, if it was like somebody was like, I am a Christian and therefore I've devoted my life to people who live in the margins of society, like that would be fine and if noble she if she did that. If she wasn't yeah, like, if, if, and she, by, then, if she then did yeah, it after saying by it. devoting my life to these people, I'm going to treat them like absolute shit because I know it's best for them. <laughs> yeah. And then also just the whole angle of like, I see poor people as a way of making myself better. Yeah. Not actually that, like, improving their lives. Like that, that whole angle well, of like, she poor does people, improve their yeah. lives because she makes them convert to Catholicism, which saves their eternal soul, which, is like, mm. is there any gift better than that? So I now they're poor, but they're not. going to heaven. I'm, 
yes. as opposed to when they were poor and just going to hell. And, and the suffering, it makes them pure. Yeah. Like they will, it's like, it's sort of like, oh my God, when you get to heaven, it's going to be so chill because your life here sucked. Mm-hmm. But like in heaven, we won't stick you with dirty needles and make you eat off plates that we wash in the sink with shit sheets. Like, it's going to be so much nicer in heaven. It has that vibe of the people who are very much like, oh, my God, you're so resilient for everything you go through. You're so strong. And Hashtag brave. You're going to you're gonna get a reward eventually, eventually mm-hmm. when yeah, you're but dead. Like, this person is, like, <laughs> burning you with a hot knife. While right. Saying, like, oh, my God, you poor thing. <laughs> you're so strong. You get so, so much abuse. As a queer <laughs> during Pride Month. I have some feelings about this because that's when we're filming this, but recording. I keep saying filming. (laughs) So there's this thing. I don't know. Do you know what indulgences are? Yes. From the medieval times? Yeah. No. Basically, you could like buy your way out of hell by giving money to the charity of the Mm -hmm. church or like gifts or like property. Like you basically use your wealth. To buy your way in. To balance the scales a bit. (laughs) Old school philanthropy. Yeah. Like if you donate a building to a university – like it's it's that kind of thing. Yeah. And that was one of the primary things that Martin Luther took issue with and like started the Protestant mm. Reformation was just like he was like, hey, it seems like um, you shouldn't be able to buy your way into heaven. <laughs> Jesus is like, um, it's like a rich man entering heaven is like as easy as like shoving a fucking camel through the eye of a needle. And mm-hmm. Mother Teresa is like, well, <laughs> but he bought us a school. What do you know? <laughs> well, how big is the needle? <laughs> how big is the school? Um, that's really the question. <laughs> like the needle is as big as the donation. Exactly. <laughs> like, and if it's a camel sized needle. <laughs> maybe this camel's just walking right the fuck through. <laughs> don't those uh loom needles get pretty big? Maybe it's one of those. I don't know. I don't know if they get camel big. <laughs> There's a needle in Seattle that's enormous. <laughs> that's the one. That's the one Jesus. <laughs> Was talking about. Whole- <laughs> oh, all all there. you would have to do is walk a camel <laughs> up the needle in through Seattle. the front doors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fit so many camels they- through that needle. <laughs> 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 I'm just gonna gaggle a camel through there. <laughs> what is a um, collective noun camel? Yeah, what is that? Oh, a, I caravan. Love Ooh, Ooh, a caravan. A caravan of camels. Love that. There's a whole caravan of I camels headed toward the border, and they're coming straight for the needle in Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> This is why we need a wall. This is why we need to re elect to Donald Trump. (laughs) (laughs) Make America camel free again. Oh, no. No. Okay. Oh, my goodness. We're silly today. I like it. Oh my god. It's daytime. <laughs> this is what happens when it yeah, when <laughs> it's not like eleven PM when we start. Yep. There is a few super notable critics of her. Um, one guy that actually lived in Calcutta and um some atheist Christopher Hitchens from the UK. Oh yeah. So these people were like writing books about her, making movies about her. Um I watched one of the documentaries today. It was called Hell's Angel, which I'm like chef's kiss at the title bro like it was so good and he was so pissy about her like he's this like old white british dude but he's so angry because he's like this this fucking con artist was it hitchens yeah and it was like a 25 minute documentary and it's free on youtube so if you want to watch it i would say watch it because it's good oh yeah i want to watch that so he said she returns us to the medieval corruption of the church, which sold indulgences to the rich while preaching hellfire and continence to the poor. Mother Teresa was not a friend of the poor. She was a friend of poverty. She said that suffering was a gift from God. And he once like camped outside her house so that he could like harass her. Nice. Um, and ask her questions. King. I know. I love it. And he asked her outright, like, are you trying to do something about poverty? And she was like, no, I'm not a social worker. <laughs> 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 and she said her mission was just to create more Catholics. She was like, that's how I'm going to help mm-hmm. people by getting them into heaven. She wasn't there to like heal or teach or like make change, which is why the children there would occasionally go unfed in the orphanages were burned with hot knives and then like excommunicated from that place uh, for disobeying the nuns. I watched like a 20 minute video um, with subtitles that it was like a child explaining what happened. And it's like, they just 
didn't do something that one of the sisters there said. Uh, and they burned him with hot knives, punished his sisters just for being like, no, don't do that to him. And then dumped him on the streets. And his parents would like see him during the, see the kids during the day, but they couldn't afford a home. They had nowhere to live. So the kids were supposed to sleep there at night. And then during the day, the parents would like dig through trash and shit looking for stuff to sell. And now they had to like bring their kids around with them. And when the interviewer asked the nun who was in charge about it and was like, should she have done that? Like, is this okay? Like, they're like, I think people understand that we have the best intentions and they, they forgive, you know, I forgive. So they forgive. Yeah. And would I do it again? Yes. But was it wrong? (laughs) No. (laughs) She's like, I mean, the thing is, is that we're operating through God. So like, how could God be wrong? And it's like, well, okay, well, that seems like a very easy way to get out of literally every horrible thing you could ever possibly do to someone. (laughs) Oh, you want to speak to my supervisor? You mean the Lord? (laughs) (laughs) Um, That that actually (laughs) happened. But When people asked where all the money that was donated went, the nuns were like, I don't know. Why don't you ask our banker? God. (laughs) They really did that. (laughs) Literally, literally. You know. I saw several people being like, our banker is God. So why don't you ask him? What are you going to fucking audit God? (laughs) Good Good luck. luck. (laughs) (laughs) So I kept referencing um, HIV because they were treating a lot of patients with HIV. And this was well after people understood how HIV was transmitted. Mm -hmm. So the fact that they were using needles on patients with HIV, rinsing them under the cold tap, (gasps) and then using them on other patients, including sick children or children in the orphanage. Jesus. When confronted about it, they're like, what's the point in sterilizing them anyway? Half these people are probably going to die. And like, these children are poor. Like, oh my God. The thing is, suffering is good for you. So is it really wrong to use a needle on someone who literally take it out of someone with HIV, rinse it under the cold water like it's me with my chopsticks, and then like put it back in some other person? Like what the literal... And I love the idea of them, the fact that they're like, well, these people are, some of these people are going to die anyways. Like, yeah, because you're not sterilizing your fucking equipment. Yeah. (laughs) That's what's leading to the deaths. (laughs) Sorry, in the 80s as well. Like the the proliferation, like when they knew what HIV was, like proliferation of HIV started much earlier when it was harder to sterilize thing, things. But in the 80s, you had auto claims. Yeah. Like you had literal closets that you could st- yeah. stick needles in and sterilize them. Like there is no reason yeah. not to. Like I understand why in certain parts of the world they have to reuse n- needles because they- there weren't um, yeah. uh, uh, disposable ones available to you. But like you could have had, s- like I'm sure thousands of wealthy donors would have d- donated fucking autoclaves. Yeah. Oh, we'll we'll get to we'll get to the fact that she could have literally afforded any of this. <laughs> anything that she needed. Uh I'll just skip to that now and we'll get back to this. Um so all the people working there were volunteers. None of them were trained, but they could have been because by the time of her death, motherfucking Teresa was a billionaire. What? <laughs> Fuck her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what okay. the fuck? One investigation found that the Vatican Bank, aka the Institute for the Works of Religion, had a huge account in her name that had she withdrawn that money from, she could have collapsed the financial institutions at the time. Jesus Christ. That's how much money she had. Like, to withdraw. These were not in assets. She would have taken, like, all of the Vatican's liquid assets. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And like, she, and yet, to this day, she has this, this like, um, cultural aesthetic of being, like, like Gandhi, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Gandhi was also a monster. Yeah, Gandhi was a, Gandhi was a little fucking yeah. pervert. <laughs> we should definitely do Gandhi at some point. Um, but I yeah. feel like Mother Teresa was probably worse. <laughs> Being this kind of like almost decrepit, poor, like simple, humble woman. Yeah. Oh, no. Mother Teresa like actively contributed or caused the deaths of so many fucking people. <laughs> way more than she saved. Like the ba- like the scales are not balanced here. Um, <laughs> fuck her. Oh, and, my God. And- fuck Mother Teresa. 
Dear God, how much money is in the bank right now? Can you tell me how much I have in my checking account? Well, Angel comes down and is like, you're overdrawn, bitch. And flies away. <laughs> That's what I Nothing, need. bitch. Spits in your face and flies away. <laughs> Thanks, Sky Daddy. Anyway. Hey, speaking of, uh, you can join our so- Patreon. <laughs> To get exclusive yes, yes patron only <laughs> access to some of the uh, some of our other content, I don't know what it is. Um. <laughs> probably, probably some outtakes that we couldn't fit in the episode. We'll tell you how much we have in yep. our uh, respect the dead checking account if you join our Patreon. <laughs> we'll send our representation a demon, and he'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Satan! I'm like, the much? devil's my banker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ask him. I'd rather have Satan <laughs> as a banker than God. <laughs> okay, so Homegirl had orphanages, but the volunteers said that there was no... So, like, a lot of people would just go and volunteer for the first time with no understanding of, like, what they were actually walking into because they expected, like, mm-hmm. this huge organization. Like, it's motherfucking Teresa. You would expect that, like they would have a list of the children they had fed that day or like an order right. that they would go in. But instead volunteers would show up and they'd be like, grab a baby and feed it. Like whoever's <laughs> closest. And the volunteers were like, I have no doubt that like quite often children just went unfed because they were just overlooked. Oh. Like, Stuff like that, where it was like, there was just no organization. There was no money put into anything. And because the, the everyone was a volunteer, except for the fucking nuns, which is like, you're also a volunteer. <laughs> like mm. They're not exactly making like fat paychecks either. Like they, and they'd all taken a vow of poverty. Like everybody there had no idea about how to properly sterilize things, like nutrition. There were patients that like choked and died because they would try and spoon feed paralyzed people whole food. Jesus Christ. Like, so, uh, can I just like, as a little sidebar, I have to say like, this is why, like, I know there are certain people who don't want to donate to um, certain charitable organizations that have very high overhead costs, but like, this is kind of why overhead costs have to be taken into account, into account because otherwise you have a bunch of yeah. fucking mm-hmm. idiots who don't know what they're doing, running around like chickens with their heads cut off and choking patients yep. to death. <laughs> like, you actually do need to have some paid people on staff. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, invest in the training, invest in people knowing what they're doing, invest in some organization, invest in like some some like doctors, doctors for your hospital, yeah. a whiteboard, of nurses, an organizational staff, something, <laughs> anything, yeah, an autoclave, a notebook. Yeah. <laughs> this is like, like yeah, God. I was so mad the entire time I was researching this. And um, when we were going to record it the other night, I was like, I'm too tired to, <laughs> to get this. mad. <laughs> what it yeah. deserves like no i'm glad we waited till to like we're all we're all here now um and, and the thing too that I, I keep thinking is like i kind of feel bad for these volunteers because it's not like they intended oh, no. no like they They're came so in traumatized like obviously that that would suck like you're you you're told like well go just go feed someone just go feed someone and they're like okay and you find a person <laughs> so fucking stupid <laughs> grab a baby and feed it like, do you want to eat and you just <laughs> grab them and you start feeding them and then they start like choking and it's like, I don't, I don't know what to do. I haven't been trained to deal with it. Like that would be horrible to go through. So like, I don't even feel like I feel a sense of like sympathy for these poor volunteers or at least some of them who probably just showed up and were really like, oh, I'm here to help. And then just weren't given any guidance. To be fair, a lot, quite a lot of them were also white saviors doing missionary work for the church. That is a good point. <laughs> so it's still a little fucking, well, uh, it's still a lot sketchy. But like, yes, it would still be really traumatizing. Yeah, and like, the whole missionary thing in general is is really fucked up for a lot of reasons, the colonization and, and such. But there is this part of me that's just like, God, imagine if you did that. Like, you're like, I'm here to help. And then, you know, your fucking person you're feeding dies because they're choking because you didn't know they were paralyzed and you were just feeding them normal food because you just didn't know. you just shoved a fucking carrot down their throat. <laughs> like, why don't you eat? <laughs> <laughs> like you're staking a vampire. Just eat it. Eat just it, a buddy. whole fucking <laughs> carrot. <laughs> I feel bad laughing about this, but like... <laughs> Down the hatch. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Sorry about your gag reflex, honey, but now you're dead. <laughs> like, <laughs> I would have survived. <laughs> um. <laughs> Leaving Mother Teresa's orphanage with an I survived because <laughs> of my gag reflex. Um, the children's 
hospitals and the orphanages were definitely the worst part. Um, Volunteers said that like, so this would be like kids like 16 and under, but mostly it was like babies. Mm -hmm. There was a a volunteer. I can't remember the exact quote, but I saw this in like two different places. Um, She went up to, it was like her second day or something. And she had some medical training And she was like, yo, this 15-year-old boy has appendicitis. Like, I need to take him to the hospital. We can't treat him here. And they were like, no, we don't do that. What? And she was like, what do you mean we don't do that? I can literally just take him to the hospital. She was like, Mm -hmm. well, if all people that couldn't be treated here would take him to the hospital, there would be nobody here. (laughs) Because you should be shut down. (laughs) And she was like, if we let him go, we'll have to let everybody go to the hospital. (laughs) If we help Fuck. one person, we'll have to help everyone. <laughs> look, look, look. We don't help people here, okay? We're not. <laughs> like, I don't know where the out. fuck you think you are, bitch. But we don't need you coming into our house and acting like you know better than fucking God. You think you know better than my dad? My fucking dad is gone. What do I look like? Fucking Mother <laughs> Teresa? <laughs> Imagine Mother Teresa saying that. <laughs> <laughs> do I look like this? If I was her, I would have said that all the time. Me too. Oh, <laughs> okay. So the children were often tied or strapped to beds, uh, occasionally because the devil was inside them because these were Catholics. Um, So people with like mental illness were obviously possessed. Uh, People with issues like Mm. anything involving like seizures or whatever were usually strapped to the beds, not just when they were having seizures, but 24 seven. The volunteers talked about children literally just like being like dragged by their arms across the floor of the orphanage and so many babies being like shaken. No, no, no. More shaken than me when I found out Natasha Leone was straight. Like literally Wait, like, is? like ruined. No way. She's straight. She, she's, no way. Yes. She's not. Natasha Leone is straight. What? I mean, yeah. now this episode is whole, hateful for whole. two reasons. <laughs> <laughs> To all the queer people listening to this, I'm so sorry. We'll put a trigger warning at the top so that you know. <laughs> Natasha. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we're talking trigger about the age straightness. Stuff, but um, <laughs> but she, she is, uh, she was an icon, just like Mother Teresa and both let us down. Mm-hmm. And like, I cannot stress enough that she, this bee had like billions of dollars in her account, but people's like toes are being amputated without anesthetic. Paralyzed people were not like given any sort of actual nutrition. Like after Buddy choked and died, they were like, we should probably stop feeding them. This is getting dangerous. And then just let them starve. And not to death. like we need to invest. <laughs> yeah. We need to invest in IVs. But even if they did have IVs, they probably would have been contaminated. And yeah. gross. Um, and yeah. And they wouldn't have killed them anyway. in a vein. Stick it in your eye. That's good enough. Just like, just like <laughs> and under your skin. You're just under the just skin. Just like mashed peas or whatever. Just giving you blood poisoning. Oh God. Okay. So they even turned down free help. It wasn't about saving money because a volunteer was like, why are we giving babies ice cold baths? That seems like it's probably bad. Like, why don't we have a water heater? In fact, I'll buy it and I'll install it and I'll hook it up. And they're like, "Mm, that's not how we do it here. This is the way Jesus wants it. So it's just suffering (laughs) porn. It's it's just like we are getting our rocks off by watching other people suffer. That's all it is. Jesus. By helping people that were really suffering. They're not they're not fancy spoiled people with hot baths. Yeah. These are like the real suffering that you're helping. But if you actually help them, then they won't be suffering enough. And they need to be suffering enough. <laughs> well, yeah. And then if they're not suffering anymore, then how can you help, help them? them? <laughs> like your point is your the per- your your purpose on earth is to help people. So we need to keep people like in a position where they need help. Yeah. It's like back yeah. in the old days when <sighs> firefighters used to like set houses on fire to to have something to do. Are you joking? <laughs> um, back when is that a thing? Back when there were like mercenary when there were mercenary firefighters, like when they weren't like publicly okay. funded, they would just like set houses on fire <laughs> and then they'd be like, "You want you want us to put it out? You can pay us some money." Oh my god, I, that's so <laughs> evil! Scam. But I love my little I love these little fire <laughs> bugs. <laughs> That is such a good scam right there. And the police are still doing that today. (laughs) 
I'm like, yeah. now that I know the police are doing it, I can tell that it's wrong. Mm, yeah. <laughs> the only men yeah. in uniform um, we okay, like so- are firefighters <laughs> and, I don't know, park rangers? Is that what we said before? Yeah, I do. I, I will. Like, um, Smokey the Bear? I was about to reference something from fairy tale theater, and I was like, that is not a cultural touchstone for most people. <laughs> we will just not. Yeah, um, I, okay. I haven't seen that. Sorry. So now that you know that they didn't have hot water... I feel like now's the good time to explain that the dishes no, and all of the linens no. were washed in the same sink at the same time. No. So the bloody piss shit sheets. So were they just all violently shitting all the time? Yeah. Onto the sheets that would then be used in the sink with their dishes. And then like was- that would cause them to shit more yeah. because they'd be eating yes. shit. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I couldn't find anything that said the nuns used those dishes, but I not. have a feeling they did not. <laughs> of course not. They'd go home to their nice clean house, <sighs> their nice clean dishes that were washed in hot water. And not shit. And, and <sighs> eat off of those. Or one of the volunteers asked Mother Teresa, like, hey, there was a regular patient here who seemed to be getting somewhat better, but she's gone. And Mother Teresa was like, oh, yeah, we took her to a different facility where they could more properly care for her. And then a few days later, she saw her, like, dumped on the street, unable to walk, like, needing very much help. But they wouldn't let her bring her back. I hate Mother <laughs> Teresa. I hate her. Did they give a reason? No, there's no reason. It's like, you, you, did, oh, you, just, you do just, not question Mother Teresa. Oh, like you can't go up to her and like question or criticize her. Like it's Mother fucking Teresa. Just you can't be like Mother to uh, Mother Teresa. I think you're amoral. Right, like, then she'll refer <laughs> me to her supervisor. God, it'll be a whole thing. Would you like me to talk to my boss, God? A little, a little guy called God. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you may, you may have heard of him. <laughs> Christ, yeah, him. <laughs> like, yes. Dumping, <sighs> dumping sick people ridiculous. on the side of the road like a box of puppies. <laughs> Like, so fucking Christ-like. <laughs> um, so, the colonialism was bad. The white savior shit was bad. But the force baptizing people out of their religions mm. on their deathbed oh, is like... fuck that. Without their consent. <gasps> wow. Like, paralyzed people, people that are unconscious. Not even, like, at the last moment, she was like come on, just let me do it just in case. I mean, just in case, right? Instead, she was like, no, let's wait till they're they're out. So they can't fight back. Oh my God, fuck her. Wow. If she has so this that- much contempt for these people, why does she care about saving them? Because it's about her. Is it just like a little notch? It's a little notch on her, her belt? It's, yeah. I think it's it's about her. Yeah. It, it is about her at... Um, at her uh, Nobel Peace Prize award ceremony. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> she brags about how many lives she saved in India and then pivoted directly into, but I feel that the greatest destroyer of peace today is abortion. Well, of course it is. <laughs> because it is a war against the child. Mm-hmm. A direct killing of the innocent child. Murder by the mother herself. And if we accept that a mother can kill even her own child, how can we tell other people not to kill one another? She was like, think about it. I have it. I mean, she would know because she's killed so many people. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking, like, how how brave of her to say, no, 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 don't kill your baby don't directly. Kill don't kill babies directly. Do Bring him to my orphanage and I'll do it for you. Like, Bring him to me. Bring him to me. I'll give him HIV. I'll feed them off of my shit plates. <laughs> And then shake them. <laughs> turn those yeah, little brains. Turn those little infant brains into soup. Just shake them like a maraca. <laughs> a little maraca. Yeah, let's go there too. God damn it! And what a fucking spit in the face of everyone that she like basically helped to kill by giving her a Nobel Peace Prize. There, there's so many people from India who uh, I read quotes by that would like go to the U.S. and people places in the U.K. and being like. Are these people fucking kidding me? Mm-hmm. Are they serious? Because like she's not known all around the world as a savior. It's just in Western countries. Just, just in the West. Everyone else is like, oh no, she was a monster because they saw what happened. There's like their children are literally scarred yeah. from 
this uh, okay she's got good pr okay the, her pr is fucking other it's billionaires bill clinton like of course of course bill clinton made her an honorary citizen of the u.s of course he did she was albanian um because she showed how we can make real our dreams for a just and good society by, by killing, killing babies, babies. <laughs> And everyone she could get her grubby little wrinkly little fucking craven paws on. Mm. She was awarded the Medal of Freedom from Ronald Reagan. Of course she was. <laughs> at the same time that they were celebrating that mass, had proxies murder four American nuns and the Catholic Archbishop of San Salvador. <gasps> yeah. Literally, while she was she was having her little mass ceremony, he had hit people go and murder a bunch of fucking nuns. And when asked about it, she was like, mm, I don't get involved in politics. <laughs> I'm going to guess that those nuns were South killed. American uh, socialists yeah. who mm-hmm. wanted to help people. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. she was just killing the kind of people that uh, Reagan held in contempt. So he was like, well, you get the Medal yeah. of Freedom. Mm-hmm. She also said that people that were dying of AIDS did it because of their dirty sexual situations, sexual their proclivities. Situations. And I'm like, I'm like, girl, how many people died of AIDS because you stuck them with a dirty fucking needle, though? How many people died of right. AIDS like, from uh, blood transfusions? Like that had a much higher rate of transmission than I and, mean that was like a hundred percent known. At, yeah, that was yeah. known at the time. That was known as as early as like the early eighties. This wasn't like a grids situation. Like yeah. she absolutely knew one hundred percent what was going on. Yeah, she was friends with neo fascist dictators, people accused of torture and genocide. The biggest financial fraudster of the eighties, Charles Keating used to fly her around on his private jet. Mm. She took money from like (laughs) mobsters. And (laughs) when confronted with evidence that her donations were made with stolen money, she was like, I don't get involved in that kind of banking. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, that's hilarious. Taking money from the mob and being like, I don't know about it though. I I don't, I don't, I don't like to think about money. I think it's crass is very funny. (laughs) I, I think they just have some laundry mats. I don't know why everyone, asking yeah. me questions about this <laughs> i don't get it they just i'm just a nun they work in uh they work in sanitation they just they've got very good benefits <laughs> it's a union job <laughs> yeah support union oh. <laughs> As mother Teresa um, says support unions <laughs> she also refused uh to return any of the money once it was proven that it was all stolen of course um okay she said <laughs> she didn't steal it <laughs> it's like where in the bible yeah. does it says having stolen money is a sin <laughs> and after all won't i use it for something better than whatever they would for it's going to the church i mean i have to come down on her side here <laughs> and if you donate sto- stolen money to our patreon like i'm not going to be mad about it <laughs> like we didn't steal it no and i i will not give it <laughs> i back will not either. give it back <laughs> yeah i won't either No, I'll keep it. (laughs) I think it is very beautiful for the poor to accept their lot, to share it with the passion of Christ. I think the world is being much helped by the suffering of poor people. (laughs) But not the suffering of me. I get to go on private jets with my buddy Ronald Reagan. (laughs) Oh, she got the best fucking medical treatment. She was like flown on private jets to the U S to get all of her treatment for all of her, everything that ailed her. And then would like be flown back to be like, have pictures taken with the poor. Oh wait, did everyone else hear that? It's from me. It's, it's some kind of jet flying by. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm like, uh, are we under attack? (laughs) Just me. I live in the only one. I live in Los Angeles. We are constantly under attack by our police. Okay. Um, well, I'm very disappointed that she, uh, when she got sick, she wasn't treated with the good old carrot down her throat. <laughs> carrot down their throat, poked with like a wet, cold meal. <laughs> Full of AIDS. It's like, oh, don't worry, I rinsed it. That was it. just used on like three patients with HIV and a small child who was disobeying. <laughs> I, I honestly, I wish she had had a much more horrible fate than she did, but she didn't. Um, as she was dying, though, an archbishop at her bedside yelled, it's the devil. Satan is messing with this dear old woman because <sighs> apparently she would uh, like have fits at night, but not during the day. And I guess like 
that means it's the devil if it's like it only happens at the witching hour or whatever the fuck. Good. <laughs> <laughs> so attempts were made to evict our dark lord from this frail, rotting, fetid woman's body. <laughs> Get her ass, um, Satan. Get her. <laughs> Get her. Uh, and it worked. And then she died. Yay. She was dead. Yay. I know. When I she was died, so happy just when old I, age. Like, yeah, just being like old, old and having like several uh, in her 80s, I want to say. Yeah, Things I don't right. know. Future Kalen, tell us. That little shit was 87. I don't know if you know, but she was turned into a saint. I did know about she that. She's canonized. She's officially a fucking saint. And it was two years after her death. Like only <gasps> two years, which is like is that a record? Good. Yeah, is, is right? that yeah? That's a record. I mean, I guess like maybe Jesus was a little sooner. If Jesus is considered a saint, maybe Mary. I feel like those would be the only two I could think of. Like the OGs. I didn't even know they were like sainted. The, like, the the Bible Kardashians. I think Mary's <laughs> Mary saint. Saint Mary. Bible yeah, Saint Mary is <laughs> like that. Because I've, yeah. I've seen churches with saint that. Mary of saint Nazareth. Mary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it might have been a different Mary, but like <laughs> I'm sure there was a lot of Mary. <laughs> I'm one of them. Because <laughs> I'm one of them, sweetie. Yeah. There's a few. Okay, so in order to be canonized, uh, you need to have performed two miracles. <laughs> Hers are fucking hilarious. They both take place after she dead. After she dead. <laughs> they both took place after she was dead. Um, the first one was apparently a woman <laughs> with several tumors was like hanging out in her living room, just like vibing next to her photo of Mother Teresa and Mother Teresa like shot a beam of light at her out of the photo <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> destroyed her tumors. Oh my God. Um, her husband was like, no, no, it was her oncologist and her treatment that did it. <laughs> it, was, it was literally her oncologist, Muhammad, did it. And he's not even Christian. <laughs> <laughs> and the church was like, then how do you explain the beam of light? And it was like, I have lies. Um, or maybe her like fucking brain tumor was like pressing on a part of her. <laughs> it could be a how do you explain this hallucination this woman with a brain tumor had? <laughs> Checkmate science. Like literally, there's like a huge lump on the side of her head. It's like, how do you explain this? It's like she's literally, her brains are leaking out. She's like, I saw Mother Teresa. <laughs> Um, okay, so the second one was also tumors. Okay, well now I believe her. <laughs> Some dude's wife prayed <laughs> to Mother Teresa. And then apparently his tumor was gone. Um, but also he was like getting cancer treatments. Mm -hmm. So not really anything, even fucking NPR posted, uh, or like published something saying even like skeptics would have a hard time disagreeing that mother Teresa performed miracles, um, which was like a really weird out of place, like biased kind of piece that was like really widely criticized because they were like, uh, we don't have a hard time saying that <laughs> somebody <laughs> getting a cancer treatment was cured of cancer by the cancer treatment. Like it's actually very easy. But we have like evidence. In the corner yeah. Or like, uh, we're, we're, we are very accepting and that that is not what happens. <laughs> <laughs> you did not interview all of us. <laughs> I had the worst sunburn, and then while I was rubbing aloe vera on myself, Jesus appeared to me and took my sunburn away. Wow, hoots. <laughs> I mean, it was still there, but it hurt so much less for, like, a while. A good hour. And then later, I peeled it off in the shape of Mother Teresa. <laughs> um Okay, a pile Gross. of wrinkly, like, like, shit, like, discarded skin is exactly how I would describe Mother Teresa. So that's I mean, yeah, fair. I would believe in that. Skin. <laughs> oh, it is her. Um, okay. <laughs> one last thing. There is one miracle that apparently uh, somebody said she performed, and it was apparently caught on film. So I watched it. And apparently the miracle is that it was really bright in the room at the time, even though it was super dark in the room at the time. Um, and the filmmaker was like, um, when I went to go see the the film that I had done for them in theaters, I realized that they were like putting this whole 
miracle narrative on it, but I had just used a new kind of Kodak film that we hadn't tried before. <laughs> so I thought maybe filter. they would praise Kodak, <laughs> but apparently it was the work, it was her divine light lighting up the room. <laughs> Literally, like, Lutz, I put my finger in front of the lens. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, dumb. Oh. Okay. Well, I mean, <laughs> those all three of those are really a stretch. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. She couldn't, like, she couldn't wind up some water or, like, do some, like, Xeroxing of some bread or some fashion or something. Like, what is this, honey? Like, I'm so sorry. Also, I find it very difficult to believe that her miracles were actually helping people. If it was, like, suddenly <laughs> there was a famine in West Africa, I'd be like, that's her. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's Mother Teresa. <laughs> yeah, looking, t- looking up at us. <laughs> <From hell. laughs> it's one of Satan's miracles. Ooh, some locusts. Thanks, Mother Teresa. She gets to hell and Satan's like, ha for a woman like you, there could be no greater punishment than having to torture the people you helped in life. And she's like, already like, burning some <laughs> with a hot poker. And she's like, sorry, what did you say? <laughs> I couldn't hear you over the sound of sizzling baby flesh. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I'm possibly going to make this episode title is going to be named Mother Teresa, open bracket, sizzling baby flesh. Yes. Close yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Sizzling yes. baby flesh. Oh my God. That or, or Anja, Anya Ganja Stravaganza. <laughs> I'm not sure yet. Well, I'm going to pee my pants. That's good. <laughs> okay. Um, I think that's it. Fuck that bitch. I hate her so much. Wow. She sucks. I'm so <laughs> glad she's fucking dead. I'm, I'm so glad she's a worm face. I honestly wish she would come back to life so that she could die again. I like <laughs> wish she could come back to life and to suffer. like get something r- yeah, really suffer because I think it's good for the world. <laughs> like it just it's just not fair that she didn't suffer because it's what she would have wanted. Mm-hmm. So I, I think like- we should get her DNA, mix it with a frog, clone her, put her in a theme park and then we'll see what mm-hmm. happens from mm-hmm. there. Ecclesiastic Park, sorry, is what it's called. Hey, it's Kaylin popping in here to tell you that you may be alarmed that neither of them really laughed at my joke. Um, But that's why you're here, besties. I'm sure they just didn't hear it or something. Yeah. To everybody, (laughs) for everybody that she harmed, like children that are now grown up, they should get to come in with like a dirty (laughs) needle and stab her. That should be like a free thing for them. Stick it with her. And then they go to the gift shop and say, I stab Mother Teresa (laughs) with a dirty needle. On a little shirt. It's like like (laughs) you give give them the needle and they give you your shirt. (laughs) Yeah. And then they take the needle and they put it under some cold water and then they pass it to the next guy. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no. Okay. It's kind of fucked up because these people are clones and not the real Mother Teresa, so she hasn't done anything yet. So I think we might need to get her to hurt some people so that it can be justified. Maybe mm. just other Mother Teresas. We're, we're talking okay. about the, we'll, the we'll, ethics we'll of cloning her. now. <laughs> the ethics of cloning we'll, and... Is a clone a separate person from... Let's let's let, Okay, we'll let out the Mother Teresa clone first and see what she does with her her life and maybe she'll make better decisions. And if she doesn't, needle time. That's my... Proposal. It's very the end of Hunger Games, where they were like, (laughs) in order to punish you, spoilers for the Hunger Games, in order to punish the people that sent these children to the Hunger Games, we are going to send their children to the Hunger Games. Yep. (laughs) A perpetuated cycle of violence. Very Shakespearean. Um, well, I'm, mm-hmm. I hope that the worms took their time eating her eyes. Yeah, um, she would have been buried because I don't think Catholics do cremation. So mm-hmm. I think they yeah, would have had the chance do. to. Snack. I don't know. There would have been much to eat, really. Some nasty gray like, eyes. She was, she, <laughs> yeah, she was very like not, there, there, was, there wasn't much on her there. She was just like, a lot of loose skin draped over a skeleton. Maybe mm. she was a little a little appetizer before they moved mm-hmm. on to a, a more filling meal. I hope so. Human jerky. Oh no. Yeah. She she was super <laughs> leathery jerky. the entire every time I looked at a photo of her, I'm like, you look like a belt that went through the wash. <laughs> <laughs> like, Have not you ever heard cute. of moisturizer? Yeah, You're a moisturizer, sunblock. You can afford it. 
Like, I'm sorry, yeah. but like, let's get some SPF on that nun. You can afford some creme mm-hmm. de la mer, sweetheart. <laughs> right? <sighs> all right. Okay. Well, thank you for telling us all about how much Mother Teresa sucked. <laughs> yeah, glad, thank you for I'm being as excited about it as I was. Oh, he's so I'm excited. so it glad great. it was a surprise. It was. It was so cool. Um, I, I wish the viewers could have seen it because, like, Hoots and I, our faces just slowly, like, our jaws got wider. <laughs> we like, were wait, smiling at each other. We knew it was coming. We knew it was coming. We were like a dog that like can tell our owner is about to take us for a walk. We were like, yeah, yeah. We were so excited. It's like, why, why are you, why are you walking to the door? Why are you opening the closet? Why oh, are you putting you're your putting, shoes on? Is that, is that my leash? Is that my leash? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> You know, Mother Teresa kind of did look like a pile of loose leather leashes, now that I think about it. Anyway, that's the whole episode. Love you. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Respect the Dead. You can follow Respect the Dead on Instagram and Twitter at underscore Respect the Dead. If you want to follow us individually, you can find our socials in the show notes. And you should check out our YouTube channels. We don't shit on dead people there as often, but still, we're making tons of cool stuff. If you enjoyed Respect the Dead and would like to support us, there's a couple of ways to do that. You can give us a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you found us. If you leave us a review, we can read it out on the podcast. Reviews are the best way for new listeners to discover the show. Give us at least five stars and then share us with a good friend who likes venting about dead people. You can also give us some money over on our Patreon. Patreon supporters get some cool bonus content like bloopers from the cutting room floor and even coming up with a fake sponsor ad that we'll read in an episode. It has to be a fake business though, not your MLM, honey. Thanks so much for listening. Join us every Monday for our next Worm Feast. I'm Kellen Conrad. I'm Ailey Mandy. And I'm Hoots. Bye. 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 Bye.